A few months ago, I detailed a do-it-yourself 35mm movie film to digital file transfer system that I made. The basis was an old ARRI 35mm medical camera, modified so that each movie frame could be captured onto a digital still camera, then converted into a movie file. That system worked pretty well. I used it primarily to transfer 35mm positive prints to digital HD. It was a bit crude, using a 12 volt power drill motor to drive the camera, and had very rough adjustment settings for picture and light levels. My goal now is to improve this system so that I could safely transfer 35mm film negatives to 4K video and color correct with DaVinci Resolve software. This is the finished system. And this is some footage transferred and corrected to 4K digital video. These are random shots created mainly for commercials, shot with Kodak 500 speed negative film about 10 or 15 years ago. As always, there's room for improvement in both the design and materials I chose. But this system works great and is still the least expensive way for me to transfer film originals. I started by tearing down the previous system, including the clamp device used to hold the camera motor. I decided to keep the camera system itself pretty much the same. There's a momentary contact switch mounted on the camera inching knob that activates the digital still camera once for each frame in the camera gate. I figured out the timing so that the frame would be snapped when it was correctly positioned and stationary in the camera gate. I remounted the disc onto the camera and drilled a hole for a pin to hold it exactly in place. My previous version used just the set screws on the collar, which occasionally slipped, throwing off the timing. I also planned on getting rid of this woodblock arrangement holding the camera in place. Originally, I used a simple 4 LED light fixture that illuminated the gate through a hole in a frosted piece of plastic inserted behind the film. The concept itself was good, but I decided to install brighter, more color efficient LEDs. I also moved the plastic diffuser to the back of the gate, farther from the film. This greatly reduces the chance of seeing dust on the diffuser as the greater distance allows it to be much more out of focus. I also wanted to be able to swivel the light sources to achieve even illumination across the frame. In addition, I chose two festoon light bulb holders for the LEDs. That way I could change out the LED bulbs and experiment with different color temperatures, brightness, and color accuracy. I also wanted finer control over the motor, in addition to being able to manually rotate it while threading the film in the camera. I chose a heavy-duty stepper motor, supplied with an angled mounting bracket, and a collar sized to secure the motor to the camera. I also got a driver for the stepper motor and a variable speed control. My goal was to transfer frames to a digital raw file, so I wanted to be able to finally control the speed of the system to allow time for the camera to process each raw file. This is a scrap mounting plate that I'll use for the motor, and this is a Zacuto DSLR mini base plate and rods for the camera. I'd previously mounted a set of rod holders to the film camera, so this would lock the digital camera in line with the film camera. After some testing between my Panasonic GH5S, G9, and S5, I decided to use the S5 as the primary digital capture camera. The full-size chip arguably produces a cleaner, more nuanced image than the Micro Four Thirds cameras. I also happen to have a Sigma 70mm macro lens. It doesn't quite fill the frame, so I added a plus one close-up lens to get it even tighter. Unfortunately, it still doesn't completely fill the frame, but it's enough to crop out a nice 4K image. I started with the new lamp. 
I removed the camera door and fashioned a bracket to support the lamp holders. I drilled a couple of holes in the bracket and tapped each for a screw that attaches each lamp holder. I soldered a power cable to each holder, then bolted the bracket to the door. I used Loctite as much as possible to keep things from working loose. I carefully figured out how far back I could mount the lamps without getting near the moving film loop inside the camera. With two bulbs, things start getting cozy in there. I then mounted the door back on the camera. These LED bulbs then just snap in. The lights could then be independently swiveled to produce the most even illumination across the frame. I used the camera waveform to help with this. I had this particle board shelf that I'll use as a base. I drilled holes for the camera mount, the camera, and the motor mount. I used a countersink on the bottom so no bolts would stick out, and the unit would sit completely flat. To get the motor in line with the film camera, it has to be suspended about 4 inches from the base. I created this simple alignment system with a couple of bolts, washers, and nuts. The metal plate, which will hold the motor, slips down onto the bolts and can be adjusted precisely up and down. Two screws securely hold the digital camera base plate in place. The motor mount can be adjusted and leveled to just the right height. This takes a little trial and error. Once aligned, I drilled holes for the bracket mount. It too can slide in and out, allowing for adjustment with the motor collar. This system worked so well I put together a similar system to adjust the tilt and horizon of the film camera. As long as the base is level, you can pretty much use the bolts to precisely level out the camera and motor. For extra support at the front of the camera, I put an upside down lens support onto the rods. Getting everything as stable as possible is very important. In fact, since I shot this video, I also added another lens support to the macro lens itself, as there was some minor bobbing which showed up in tests. I wired the driver, motor, and variable control together, adding a 12-volt power supply to the whole rig. To get the maximum runtime, I use an ARRI 1000-foot mag. Unfortunately, some archived film is mounted on 1200 foot flats, so they have to be split and spliced. In the future, I'll ask the lab to only supply 1000 or 800 foot flats. The film is threaded into the camera gate like any other ARRI 2B or C camera. The only trick is that the frame line might have to be shifted one or two perforations so that it lines up the frame in the gate without showing the frame line. Technically, this might mean that the loop is slightly larger or smaller than ideal, but because the camera runs at very slow speed, this shift doesn't seem to affect picture steadiness. I set up the digital camera to record a full resolution still RAW file for each frame. With negative film, I found I got the best results by saving a white balance in the camera on a blank section of film negative. This would eliminate most of the orange mask on the film and make color balancing much easier in post. I tried running the camera tethered to a laptop, but for some reason this was not as reliable as using an ultra-fast SD card in the camera. The laptop could not keep up with the image storage demands of the raw files. This could be a speed problem with my laptop the laptop drive, or the USB connection output from the camera. I have yet to figure that problem out. If I had an external recorder for the camera, like an Atomos or Blackmagic, that might work as well. Posting the footage is easy, but a little time intensive. If I shot JPEGs in camera, the process would be a lot faster, but I found the raw camera files had a sparkle and cleanness the JPEGs couldn't match. Besides, I figured if you're shooting 35mm, you'd want the best results possible. 
I first imported the files into Adobe After Effects as a raw sequence. I cropped and inverted the files, outputting a 4K ProRes 444 movie file. This I input into DaVinci Resolve, inverted and color corrected. I use Neat Video to clean up the grain. I'd like to do the whole thing in DaVinci Resolve, but I couldn't import the raw files as a movie sequence. This footage is Kodak 5279, a 500 speed stock that's two generations behind the current 5219 500 speed negative stock. So I would think that the grain structure on new footage would be even tighter and cleaner. I'll continue to experiment with different settings and newer film stocks. Meanwhile, I've got plenty of old footage that could make excellent new stock shots. If you like this video, please subscribe and hit like. I appreciate comments and suggestions as well.